call the meeting to order and take roll call. Mr. Hilsinger? Here. Mr. Elliott? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Ballard? Here. Mr. Cunningham? Here. And Mr. Sneed? Here. All right, we have six. Um, we have a status sheet from March 28th to June 27th. We need a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept. Second that motion. Discussion? Seeing no one, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Um, we have no committee reports. So we'll go to the first new business item. Mr. Helsinger, did yeah. you do the minutes? The minutes were before the status sheet. Oh, no, we did not. Let's do those now. Okay. Can we get a motion for the? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Awesome. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. I Aye. have it. Now we'll go to new business. Thank you. PC 17 and 18 dash 22, our ladies in. Good evening. PC 17 and 18 dash 22, our ladies in is a request for a change in zoning from R2 to R5 with a PEU for a 7.37 acre tract on the north side of Big Bend Road at the corner of Longstone Lane. As you recall from public hearing, this site is in um, sort of Midwest County, um, and there you can see it outlined in red on the aerial. From this larger aerial, you can see some of the surrounding um, single family residential development. Here's the preliminary site development plan presented at public hearing. It shows a 17,000 square foot building accessed via a new curb cut from Big Bend Road. The new curb cut is to the east of the current entrance, which will be closed. 35 parking spaces are shown at the site um, and their landscaping plan indicates plans to retain the existing plant mass around the perimeter of the site and adds new landscaping around the parking lot. Additionally, two stormwater basins are shown at the site. The petitioner also showed a preliminary floor plan at public hearing. It shows 14 bedrooms highlighted here in blue, 10 program offices highlighted in red, and 12 administrative offices highlighted in green. The floor plan also shows a community room, dining area, classroom, and various storage areas. The department was concerned about the number of administrative offices shown on the floor plan um, as no office use not directly tied to the daily operations of the facility are permitted. Subsequent to public hearing and conversations with the department, the petitioner submitted a revised site development plan showing 28 parking spaces, um, providing a breakdown of three ADA accessible spaces, eight for residents, four for professional resources and visitors, and 13 spaces for staff. Um, the Revised preliminary floor plans show only five offices on the west wing, um, and the petitioner also provided more information about the program offices um, as listed here um, on the screen. The department recommends the petitioner retain the existing tree mass but remove any dead, unhealthy, or invasive species, including honeysuckle. The department recommends adding trees along the driveway to enhance the residential feel of the site. Um, and the department also recommends the recommends residential style lighting with 16 foot light standards and bollard style light poles. One issue brought up at public hearing was potential stormwater and sanitary issues at the site. Subsequent to public hearing, the petitioner provided additional information about the stormwater and sanitary capacity at the site from MSD. Um, MSD indicated uh, that the typical stormwater requirements um, would need to be met at the site, and those requirements are, are laid out here for you. Um, additionally, regarding the sanitary issues, which seem to be uh, the issue of greater concern, um, they noted that the pump station capacity may need to be increased to accommodate the development. 
um, that storage upgrades may be required. And they also noted that sanitary studies and upgrades typically occur during the site development plan review process. And thus the department recommends that the petitioner would be required to submit a written report explaining the sanitary sewer upgrades um, that would be submitted prior to site development plan approval. And the department also notes that updates may be done in tandem with other MSD improvements and the developer would be responsible for partnering with MSD regarding funding the upgrades. The department is recommending approval of this request. As a standalone request, R5 residence district zoning would be inappropriate at this site. However, the planned environment unit procedure encumbers the site and will not allow any other R5 residence district uses to be developed. The department finds that the PEU procedure is the appropriate mechanism for developing the proposed use. The proposed group living facility is a residential use and belongs in a residence district and the department notes that no office would be office use not directly tied to the daily operations of the facility will be permitted at the site. And so the department recommends um, approval with the following specific conditions of development. The existing plant mass shall be maintained. Residential style lighting shall be used. Architectural elevations showing the structure is equally treated on all sides shall be submitted and a written report explaining sanitary sewer upgrades shall be submitted prior to site development plan approval. So at this time, I'd like to request a motion for approval. Okay, with that, uh, we need a motion of some kind. Anyone? I'll make a mo motion for approval, but I have a question after I get a second here. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second it. Okay, we got it on the floor. Uh, Keith, go ahead. Yeah, uh, and I know this doesn't happen until later, but is, is that Valley Park Fire Department there, Fire District? I believe it is in the <clears throat> in the Valley Park uh, Fire District, but we can double yeah, check I, that real quick. Now, my concern was only do they have enough ample, uh, is the road wide enough to get a, a truck up there and a hook? Do they have a ladder truck? Long enough so, to get back in that that T mm -hmm. section of that building. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. If this project does go through site development plan review, the fire district does review um, their hydrant locations and the access. Um, so the plan wouldn't be able to be approved if it didn't work for the fire district. And at that time, if if they needed more road, do they have or enough? Air, do they have enough area to put a road around the side of that building? Right. If they had to do that, they they'd likely. They'd either have to facilitate that under the conditions as proposed, you know, by the commission, or if they needed some sort of tweak and setbacks, they could come back to the commission to ask for an adjustment. But um, they would have to meet all of the fire district's requirements before their site plan could be improved, including um, the drive around the building if that's needed, just like you're mentioning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Tom? Uh, yeah, I, I just have I just want to clarify one thing. It's currently. Now, uh, or, or I'm sorry, uh, it's currently in what zone right uh, zoning right now? This site is currently zoned R2. It is R2. Okay. Yes. And, and why do they want to go to R5? Um, because if it's R2, we can allow them to build it on R2 as well as we. So the the use a group living facility is not a permitted or conditional use until you get up to the R5. So in the R2 there are some other group living uses that are permitted but not a group living facility for in this case this one is for charitable purposes. So okay. the, the ones that are permitted are like group homes for the handicapped, group homes for um re religious sure. orders, but it's not sure. until the R5 that this use is an option. Okay. So so by doing this it, let's say down the road, uh, for whatever reason, they outgrow it, they have to move. Uh, it remains R5. They just don't have uh, the next, the next uh, petitioner for that property would have to apply for something else, but, but it would remain 
zoned R5, is that correct? So if this proposal went through, it would be zoned R5, but it would also be encumbered by the PEU procedure. So say this use was developed as the petitioner proposed and, and existed for 15 years. If they wanted to leave the site, the site could only be utilized for a different group living facility that meets those conditions. If they wanted to do any okay. other any other use, they'd have to go back to public hearing. Okay. And it sounds like they've uh, address the issue of the uh, uh, deficient pump station and the developer would be uh, responsible for working out the cost of that with MSD is, uh, I think that's what you said. Yes, it, yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, anyone that else? Seeing none, we have a uh, a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 6-0. And we'll go on to PC 13-21, South County Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Mr. Hilzinger, I just want to let everyone know that Mr. Yeah. Lawler has joined. He's in the oh, meeting okay. now. Okay. Uh, uh, Excuse me, my, my, my says, uh, screen says, thanks for using Cisco. I can still have, uh, I, I guess I need to sign off to sign back in. Is that right? Mel? not sure you might be able to just leave it since we can still hear and see you. If you just minim, <clears throat> excuse me, is it something you can minimize? Hold on. He's gone. Oh. We can still see you, Mr. Steve. You're, you're, you're great. You're great. Okay. I, yep, that, that worked. Okay. All right. Good evening. PC 13 21 South County Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram is requesting a C3 to a C8 for 0 0.69 acres located to the southeast side of Lee May Ferry Road, approximately 440 feet southwest of Victory Drive. This location is in South County and it's highlighted in an outline of red for you. And here it is in a larger image. Again, the property is outlined in red. So at public hearing, the petitioners noted um, four detail bays that are already existing, two automatic car washes that are already existing with two stacking lanes, and two curb cuts off of Lee May Ferry Road. They're proposing a photo booth area to the north of this property, which is why it's going into a C8. So, um, staff recommends a decorative site proof fence along the eastern property line. Um, and in their comments, MoDOT recommended closing one of the two curb cuts off of Lee May Ferry Road. Staff would recommend closing the southern curb cut, but it's up to the petitioner as to what they would like to do with that. Um, if they were to close the southern curb cut, we would like to see the southwest landscape buffer yard be extended and additional landscape, not only throughout the site, but specifically towards the southwest portion. The department recommends approval as commercial zoning remains appropriate along Lee May Ferry Road, and the site currently operates as a car wash, the additional use of private photography studio for vehicles is compatible with commercial uses along Lee May Ferry Road, a highly commercialized arterial development with many auto-oriented uses. So at this time, I would ask for a motion of approval. Okay, thank you. Um, we need a motion. I'll make a motion for approval. Second the motion. It's okay. Discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 7 0. And we'll go on to uh, PC 19 22, Pro Mall Inc. Pedal Wave Car Wars. So, Wayne, so the at one point, we had published the agenda, and we thought we were going to be bringing that info report, but we are not. We actually don't have that info report on okay. the agenda anymore. Okay. We will skip that then, 
and we'll go on to PC old business PC 08 dash 22 and 09 dash 22 quick trip corporation. Uh, good evening commissioners uh, before you is PC 08 and 09 dash 22 uh, quick trip corporation. Um, which is a request for a change of zoning from R2 and C2 to C2 with a CUP for a 2.5 acre track located on the northwest quadrant of Butler Hill Road and Lee May Ferry Road. As you can see from the county contacts map, this parcel is located in uh, South St. Louis County, just to the east of Interstate 55, and the parcel is outlined in red um, on the aerial. And this aerial provides uh, some further context of the surrounding land uses. Uh, the east side of Lime Ferry Road is uh, primarily developed with uh, residential. Um, and then on the west side of Lime Ferry Road, south of Butler Hill is, is primarily commercial. Uh, there's some commercial uh, north of Butler Hill, but there is also some multifamily residential uh, to the north and west. Uh, the preliminary site development plan as shown at public hearing indicated access from both Butler Hill and Lime Ferry. Um, the access from Butler Hill would be full ingress and egress, whereas the access from Lime Ferry uh, would be right in only uh, with full egress. Uh, the petitioner uh, commissioned a uh, traffic study um, prior to applying, not a, and was not as a condition of applying for the, uh, the change in zoning, um, and that report indicated that the traffic demand generated by this use would require the addition of a right turn lane from Lee May Ferry to Butler Hill. Um, the petitioner has stated that they would um, fund that uh, expenditure at, at their own cost. Um, additionally, there's a ped pedestrian <coughs> path shown from Butler Hill, um, kind of outlined in the, by the red box, um, but there is not a corresponding pedestrian path from Lee May Ferry. Uh, the required parking for the convenience store use would be 21 spaces. They are providing 54 spaces. And I did want to bring your attention to a large retaining wall with fencing um, along the, the west and north um, around the uh, fuel pump area. Some recommended revisions to the site plan include adding a pedestrian path from Lee May Ferry Road to an entrance uh, of the convenience store and similar to what they proposed from Butler Hill Road. Um, additionally, parking in excess of 120% of the maximum required parking um, is required to be located on previous pavement. Um, I would uh, note that the two signs that they're proposing, one at one at each entrance, um, are too tall to be considered a monument sign. So staff recommends monument style signage only, uh, which would limit the the sign height to eight feet rather than the 15 feet that they're showing and additionally limiting the light standards to 16 feet in height. Uh, the preliminary landscape plan, the petitioner submitted um, and presented at public hearing um, shows the landscape buffer yard along the northern property line and, as well as both rights of way. Um, and then there is minimal interior parking lot landscaping proposed. Uh, recommended revisions to the landscape plan include increasing the width of the southern landscape islands at the terminus of the parking rows, both east and west of the convenience store, um, as well as adding parking islands to the northern terminus of parking rows, uh, both east and west of the convenience store. Additionally, the northern buffer yard is required um, to have two trees and four shrubs um, per 20 linear feet, and then additionally requiring Missouri native plantings. Uh, so this evening we are recommending a modified approval. Uh, we're recommending for PC08-22 approval of C8 plant commercial district in lieu of the C2. Um, and then along with that 09-22, we're recommending a denial of the conditional use permit. Uh, the proposed use is appropriate at this site when it's located in a C8 district. Um, the purpose of which of, of a C8 district is uh, for the establishment of developments and uses in locations that are appropriate under an approved site plan and specific conditions of development, as so long as those approved plans and conditions are consistent with good planning practice uh, and compatible with the permitted developments and uses in the adjoining districts. Um, so along those, those lines, the CA procedure allows the county to, to exercise maximum control 
over the development to ensure that it is consistent with good planning practice and compatible with the permitted developments and uses in adjoining districts. Uh, we're recommending requiring enhanced landscaping uh, as previously described, limiting the height of light standards to 16 feet, uh, which matches the residential uh, maximum height for a light standard, uh, requiring a commemorative architectural feature from the existing Casabon building to be located on the site, uh, providing equal pedestrian access from both rights of way uh, and requiring architectural review um, to include 35% fenestration, brick or stone cladding, and the equal treatment of all facades. As you'll recall at the uh, a previous executive meeting in April, uh, the petitioner requested um, this petition to be held, um, which it was. They submitted a letter uh, dated May 18th, um, raising three objections to the recommendations of the staff information report and the conditions in attachment C. Um, specifically, they object to the recommendation of C8 in lieu of C2 with the CUP. Um, they request removal of the requirement for two electric vehicle charging stations, and they request a waiver of the requirement for pervious pavement for parking areas in excess of 120% of the required parking. So in response to the petitions letter and as outlined in the cover memo that was sent to you, uh, St. Louis County uh, derives its planning and zoning authority from its home rule charter, not from Chapter 64 of the Ride Statutes of the State of Missouri, as uh, implied by the uh, petitioner's letter. Additionally, Section 1003.300.10 of the St. Louis County Revised Ordinances grants the Planning Commission the authority to recommend a zoning district other than what was requested. Um, we are removing the requirement for uh, the electric, electric vehicle charging stations, and the department finds that no demonstrable reason was given. Uh, to waive the requirement of the zoning ordinance for pervious pavement uh, to be located on excess parking. I would note that the pervious pavement would be um, as approved on the site plan in locations that uh, don't have potential you know, hazards from fuel spill. So it wouldn't be located uh, where fuel is dispensed or where fuel is stored. Um, it would be a regular parking space uh, for the convenience store. So at this time, I would ask for a motion for a Modified approval, um, approving for PC08-22, approval of C8 in lieu of C2, and then subsequently denying the uh, request for a conditional use permit in PC09-22. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, do we have a motion? Yeah, <clears throat> this is Bill, Bill Stade. I'll make a motion for approval with conditions. And I can get into a couple of the conditions if we get a second. Okay. Do we have a second to get it on the floor? A second, Wayne. Okay, thanks, Bill. All right, Bill, you wanna go ahead? Sure. Uh, first of all, I, I think the uh, staff's report was very comprehensive and and it was certainly helpful. Uh, and, and I would agree that C8 is the appropriate one uh, that, that, that they're also recommending. Uh, there are uh, uh, the chargers, uh, or, or I would certainly agree with that. I, I am still having some reservation about the pervious uh, pavement. Uh, I think that the report and responses from the petitioner has some credibility. Uh, I think they, it, correct me if I'm uh, uh, wrong on this, but having read it, it seems as though they plan to have more, uh, it's non-parking area, <clears throat> and they plan to have more plantings and, and that type of thing. Is there... Uh, uh, is, is that not at least a partial reason to waive that requirement and have them do, uh, uh, construct a more uh, planted areas instead? 
If that absolutely, so if the commission would would prefer that the, the that be struck out and or to put a to permit um, you know a completely paved area um, without pervious pavement, it's absolutely within your uh, purview to do so. And your rationale can be um, the addition of of additional plantings, uh, off, you know, slightly off site. So yes, that's absolutely within your purview to to do so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I, I wouldn't want to change something that would. Uh, affect the control of water or 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 dumping uh water that's not controlled so uh we really have to rely on you all to do that and i think it was an excellent job of uh of explaining it in the reports so i guess i would uh like to if i can uh get a motion to change uh the recommendation you want to go ahead and, and change your motion to include that? To and include that. that. With Bill Ballard will go from there. Okay. So I'll make a motion with that condition. Okay. Bill? Okay, I'll second that motion. Okay. So we have a first and second. Anyone else have anything to add? The only thing I make note of is on the C8, this commission throughout the years has always preferred and will always go for a C8 over any of the other commercial classifications. And that's solely that we have right. um, a measure of what's going on and what's going to be done that we don't get with the other classifications so uh, just so they have the record straight on that anyone else no i think i got that's okay okay um seeing no one else we have a first and a second all those in favor aye aye opposed ayes have it seven zero um, no old business. Uh, so we'll go to correspondence. First item is PC 36-21 Moto Inc. As you recall, um, PC 36-21 Moto Inc. is a request for a change in zoning from M1 to FPM1 and FPM3 to M3 and FPM3 for a 2.94 acre tract on the southeast quadrant of I-255 and Coke Road. Um, this is a response to a council order from April 26th referring the petition back to the Planning Commission for further consideration. As you recall, this site is in South County. Um, the petition timeline is here for your reference. It was uh, most it was held at your meeting on May 23rd. Uh, the department has prepared a response to the council order reiterating approval um, based on the conditions outlined in your letter of recommendation, which are also uh, listed here. Oh, so at this time, I'd like to request a motion. I apologize. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion for approval as, as recommended. And I'll second it, but have a comment. Okay, go ahead, Bill. Uh, Mr. Ballard uh, brought up an a, a issue that I think is germane and, and should also be included in the letter. Uh, and that is that there is a precedent uh, on our northern border of the city. Uh, I drove out there and it's on 270 and Riverview. It's almost an ident identical situation. So uh, we, as the county have set a precedent to allow a filling station at the uh, entrance point into 
the county from Illinois. And that was, I think, one of the one of the objections that was uh, to deny it. And and I just think that the letter should uh, indicate that we've done it before as as an organization. We can add that in. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else have anything to add? I'd like to thank Mr. Sneed for that. Uh, there's really two service stations up there that we did years ago. So the president has been set twice. <laughs> I would just make note on the reduced crime at the site. This is the only site in all the years that I've been here that I was told by a petitioner not to go on the site because it wasn't safe. And that was due to an encampment at the at the base of this site. I, I so I, I think it's further reason to see some kind of development at this location. And uh, nothing has happened there for at least two decades. So with that, uh, we have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 7-0. And we'll go on to PC. 84-01 KM Properties. So this is a uh, PC 8401 KM Properties, which is a three acre C8 district on the west side of Telegraph Road, approximately 300 feet north of Herb Road. Um, they were requesting amendments to the C8 ordinance. This site is located in South County. Uh, it's in the Oakville area on the west side of Telegraph across from the um, National Church residences and the Order of St. Clair uh, Nuns Home. So this C8 ordinance as written, most recently amended by this commission in 2007, I think, um, currently limits the number of restaurants over 1,500 square feet to one. The reasoning is that restaurants smaller than that have a parking calculation that is based on square footage. Restaurants over 1,500 square feet have a parking calculation calculation based on the number of seats and the number of employees. So in 2007, the petitioner was asking for a parking reduction and in return was offering to limit themselves to the number of um, sit down uh, larger restaurants. So today they do want to have more restaurants. So their request is to remove uh, to to up that limit on the on the number of restaurants from one restaurant over 1500 square feet to three. And then they are also asking for an increased parking reduction. Right now they have a 15% parking reduction and they're asking for a 17% parking reduction. So if you look at this parking table, it shows that the development has 128 parking spaces and based on their proposed mix of tenants, they need 150. This leaves them about 17% short. That's why they're requesting 17%. Um, In our analysis, um, the department noticed that since this ordinance was last amended, the overall zoning ordinance was amended for the parking requirements to come down. So the parking for retail uses and restaurants in this development is actually less than what it was um, in 2007. So the, the petitioner did ask for that limit on the number of restaurants to be increased, but what the department finds is that the limit isn't really necessary. We think that the mix of uses um, works with the amount of parking that's shown. We also find that um, there are uh, empty spaces. When we look at the aerial photography and the Google Street View, there are extra spaces in this development at different times of day. But we do find that it would be appropriate to grant a 20% parking reduction to this C8, which is the maximum parking reduction you can grant a C8 that's less than 500,000 square feet in size. We find that this would allow the petitioner greater flexibility in, in um, you know, leasing out the development and that the provided parking does work for this proposed mix of tenants. So we are recommending a modified approval of their request, but it does um, meet the meet the uh, intentions of the petitioner. So this would remove the restriction on the number of restaurants and up the parking reduction from 15% to 20%. And with that, I would ask for a motion of approval. Okay. We need a motion. I 
make a motion for approval, but I have a question. Okay. Okay. Do we have a second? Second a motion. Second. Okay. Uh, Keith. The question is for for you, Wayne, and and Bill, because I, you know, I used to live down there and go to a couple of the restaurants in there, and now there's more restaurants. Are they completely packed on a Friday night where it's overflowed? Can I answer that? Go ahead, Bill. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that uh, development is over parked every day. Not during the day. If you fly over it while people are working, it's not. But the the traffic in there the overflows into Walgreens parking lot. They park in the aisles. Uh, they park along the storefronts for the, in the fire lanes. I just don't understand how we can support that with the information that we're given. Then I'll, okay. I'll resend my motion. Okay. Um, does the second one rescind theirs? Gary, I think it was you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So would the like would the commission like to have a modified recommendation, or would you like to um, just not, or or just say um, that that you find that um, the site is, in fact, does have uh, parking pro issues with its current mix, and as such, you make no you you recommend no change to the to the governing ordinance. Yeah, you know, I think they've got what four restaurants in there now. So the, they would have. Um, there are several restaurants, but uh, many of them are smaller than fifteen hundred square feet. The Chinese restaurant, um, a couple of them are smaller. Um, but they, Abby, could you go back to the slide with the table on it? I think there are. Yeah. So the Las Fuentes is a large is restaurant. The, uh... The big one's the Mexican restaurant. Yeah, Las Fuentes really is one of the large existing restaurants. The new restaurant they want to add is this Nubby's um, barbecue restaurant. Um, that's already in there. That's in there. That's, that, so that's they're, in there. That's they're what's actually the problem. Right. There actually is some, um, the timeline of occupancy uh, issuance was off with this proposal. So part of this request is to rectify, I think, specifically the Nubby's. Um, occupancy that exists how, how did they get permission to even go in there with the size restaurant um uh, that that they uh, uh it wasn't a restaurant before it was uh, a, a wine shop and, and a small bar right it, uh, uh so there was I mean, some difficulty in interpreting this ordinance um on the county's code, end code enforcement had some Code enforcement and the Department of Transportation Public Works issued a, an occupancy permit. Is that correct, Mel? Correct. Well, I, I, I just think we're driving people to cross uh, a five-lane road to get to the parking of the uh, development across the street. The other uh, Tory Pines. Are, are to park in. Uh, their neighbor's yard at Walgreens or parking. I mean, it, it's terrible. It, it really is. I hear about it all the time. I said, what can I do about it? I didn't even know it is going to put something in there. So I think that what I'm hearing from the commission is that, and correct me if I am, if I am uh, putting words into your mouths, you would like your response to actually say that the commission finds that there are rationales for not amending this ordinance and you find no, um, you do not find a reason to amend this ordinance based on um, that the site currently as it operates in the evenings is actually is under parked. It does not have enough parking for the, for the number of uses. I build right on that. Right. If that and so what we would do as staff is that we would um, redraft this um, to match um, your conversation from today, and we would bring it back to you in two weeks to ensure that it says what you wanted to say. Um, which, from what I'm hearing, is that um, the commission's recommendation is not to amend this ordinance. Um, that you find that it is currently underparked; it does not have enough parking for the uses, um, and that you find no rational reason or no there's no reason at this point to amend the ordinance. What well, what do they do with nubbies then? 
That will be a question. Mm -hmm. um, would probably have to look into that mm -hmm. and okay. we would get an answer before the, the next executive meeting. Okay, that's fine. Okay, well, then we want to hold on this. Yeah, you can do you can you can request a hold and we'll bring you we'll bring you a, a new a communication revised, yes. that reflects this conversation. All right, great. I, I have a question. If this is for the caterer, how many parking spaces does a caterer need? So um and and this did come up when I talked about this with the zoning enforcement officer, but I'm not sure that they would propose just the catering operation. I think it goes hand in hand um sure. with the restaurant use. They have um, a full bar in there. On the catering side or yeah. just in the restaurant. And on the other side, it's all tables. So it's a restaurant. It's a full restaurant. They may use be using the name catering, but uh, I wouldn't classify what you see in there as catering. Because uh, they've got two entries on here. Well, that's right. it. They've got 3,600 square feet. Right. They 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 took uh, Nubby's is in two ten what was formerly two tenant spaces. I think that's why it's shown as two um, lines. Yeah. The the left side was a wine shop, and then the right was a uh, a bar, and, and they did do food. But it was under 1,500 square feet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Real small. But Nubby's has taken over. The whole thing is food. What I would note is that in 2007, when this ordinance was amended, this Rich's custard did already exist and it is over 1500 square feet. Um, so I think it was sort of just missed during the last ordinance amendment, but it essentially is legally non conforming. It, it doesn't meet the text of this ordinance. Through this ordinance, Las Fuentes is the only restaurant permitted. But I think the rich is custard because it's on its own, its own uh, parcel. It also technically doesn't comply with this. Um, but that's just a piece, that's just extra information. And I don't think Rich's has any inside seating any longer. It's strictly walk. It's primarily drive through, or they yeah. they do sit out on uh, some little tables outside, but it's minimal. They're showing it has 32 seats inside, but that doesn't mean people. I think are with the pandemic, it. they shut mm -hmm. it off. Oh, okay. But like Jacob said, we'll get more information. We'll we'll rewrite this um, to align with with what you guys have told us today, um, and okay. bring it back at the at the next July meeting. Do we have a motion to hold? I'll make a motion to hold. We have a second. Second. Here is second. Yeah. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Ayes have it. Seven zero. And then we'll go to PC 29-17 Serenity Hills LLC. So this um this is a, a resolution we had drafted that would have gone um, sort of hand in hand with the petition that has now been withdrawn from tonight's public hearing um, because that PEU by that Hillsborough development had expired. The commission would have had to pass this resolution to have the public hearing to consider reverting the zoning. But since that petition has been withdrawn, uh, withdrawn, the commission does not have to adopt this resolution. Okay, so we don't need to take any action at all. Then. Correct. Correct. Okay. And with that, we'll go on to uh, one site plan, PC 30-21 NVS Properties 11 LLC. Uh, yeah, before you is PC 30-21 uh, NVS Properties 11 LLC. Uh, as you recall, recall it was a, a request for a C8 um, to permit a Montessori child care center. Uh, th this is the site plan. Um, there's a fence um, both along the west property line and atop the retaining wall that surrounds the the playground area, um, as required by the the site specific ordinance. Um, access is from Arbor Spring Drive, um, and then there's a monument sign um, just outside the the detention basin near the the entrance. Um, 
additionally, there, there's parking um, along the front um, of the building. Um, that's, that's okay. Go ahead, Heidi. Uh, this is the, the lighting plan. Um, as you'll recall, there was a requirement in the, the site specific ordinance not to permit uh, any light standards west of the, you know behind the the western edge of the building um all of the the blue is um a, a foot candle note showing that there is no light being cast um in that area all light standards are are within the parking lot or on the building itself um, and then those images are just uh um examples of the the type of lamp sta light standards they propose to use Uh, this is the landscaping plan. Um, there's extensive landscaping uh, along the western property line, um, as well as um, on the, the the south and north. And there's some landscaping um, along the right of way um, of Sulphur Springs. There was some site distance uh, concerns that that removed some of the, the landscaping there. Well, these are the elevations uh, east and west. So east would be uh, facing Sulphur Springs, um, looking at the entrance of the building. West is um, the rear of the site, uh, uh, looking towards, I guess if you, this would be the view if you're um, in the residential development uh, to, to the west. And then this would be the, the south elevation. And the north elevation, as you can see, all sides are, are treated equally. And the next slide has some details on the um, materials to be used, the, the types of shingles and, and decorative stone, as well as the, the colors um, of the paint for the, the siding. And then this has uh, several details of the, the dumpster elevations. Um, you can see the, the cement uh, enclosure with the, the cedar shingle doors. Um, the fences that are being proposed, these, I would point out the, the smaller fence um, is uh, interior to the playground area. It, it demarcates the different um, playground areas for different age groups. Um, and then there is a uh, uh, example of the proposed monument sign. Uh, so I would ask for a motion of approval of both the site plan and the architecture elevations at this time. I'd like to make a motion for the site plan and the elevation. I second. Yes. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 7-0. Uh, last item for the good of the art or anything? Jacob? I I don't have anything for y'all this evening, so let's spend the next 12 minutes before public hearing uh, relaxing. Okay, with that, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Keith, Opposed? get to your crackers. I yep. have it 7 0, and Keith, go eat a cracker. <laughs>